thought I'd record a little tutorial about how this uh, dot stuff has advanced since my last little experiment I posted on the wiki. Um, this is very much based on uh, this code um, from the GPU Gems book. Um, it, it just had to translate a little bit for VEX and get a little bit um, cleaner in my brain. Um, I think it makes sense now. So let's see if it makes sense for you as well. Uh, so here's what we got to last time. Um, just a very quick run through of this. The idea is pretty straightforward, where what we do is we start with the UVs, which I'll just visualize here by going CD is equal to UV. So there it is. Um, if we multiply that by a number, we can get uh, big numbers. That's fine. Um, that's not great for doing UVs. But if we were to grab uh, everything after the decimal point or the fractional components, we get little sub UV regions. So I can do that by going uh, frac of that. So that's little sub UV tiles. Um, or I can grab um, everything on the other side of the decimal point and um, get a, a big clear cell, uh, which I can do by going uh, floor like that. So they're big numbers. Uh, what can we do with this? So just as a little hint for later, because this is a unique ID per cell, uh, I could generate a random color per cell by going like that. So just do, uh, what am I doing? Could be a rand inside that. Oh, do you know what I mean? Shouldn't live code. So there's a random color per cell. We'll use that later. Um, the other thing we can do is, uh, if I go back to the frac, uh, give it that next thing. So you can see that um, with each of these little zones, um, the the zero zero coordinate is in the very corner there. If we want to move it to the center, we can uh, subtract 0.5. Yeah, so that's how I moved the center to the center of each tile. Uh, now with that, we could maybe, um, if we wanted to uh, convert this UV coordinate into a gradient that's, that that uh, shows us kind of you know um, how far every point is from each center UV tile, I could measure that by going say a length of that. Uh, so I've got a little length call. So I've got little little gradients. Um, I could do one more thing with this where I could uh, add a random number uh, for every cell. So we, we used the random thing before to generate a random, random sort of color per cell. If we think of that as a position, we can add that to these UVs so that each UV will, will be slightly shifted and offset. So if I go uh, rand of the uh, floor of the UVs times eight uh, plus all that, uh, break in there. So now we're getting offset numbers. Um, and that's what I've done up here, tidier. So the last thing in that whole operation, I'll start. I'll stop um, here coding and just show you the code that's going on here. So that's where I um, multiply up my UVs and, and get the cell and the frac component, which I'm calling cell and local UV. Uh, that's where I shift it so that the center is at the center of each, each cell. Um, that's where I add a random offset to randomize the, the, the UVs. Uh, I then generate a random color per cell. I um, what I'm doing here is I've made this image variable be a vector four, which means that I'm using it as an RGB and alpha. So I'm setting the alpha component to be that gradient. Uh, I use a smooth function. And what a smooth does is uh, given a gradient, you say, uh, go from uh, this value in the gradient to another part of the gradient and, and, sort of, and kind of remap it. So that what we can do is we can change the gradient into a circle like we've got here. Uh, and then because that gradient was, uh, was the inverse, where it's black in the center and white on the outside. I then invert it by going one minus, and then I do a lerp between the existing color, which, which I said should just be white, and this new color using the alpha channel. So I get dots, fairly straightforward. Uh, what we can do with that uh, random offset is we can start to you know, push these off, but there's an issue here. If we get beyond the edge of the tiles, we start to clip, clip the circles. Um, that was as far as I got last time uh, so I was just kind of like just trying to keep my, my, my randomness within kind of a tidy range, but you can see it's, it's not very random. How can we fix it? Uh, what that uh, GPU Gems article suggests is that um, if you think of it in terms of uh, if we go to a smaller one, um, in the previous example, we were just calculating the, the cell per cell and that's it. So, so each cell just calculates itself. 
um, what we could do is we could calculate itself plus its surrounding eight cells. And as we slide each, each, um, each tile, each cell, we'd then be revealing the other ones around it. Um, kind of simple in theory, much easier to visualize with a, with a bit of VEX and channels here. So um, you can see that there's a bit of odd fringing around the edges of these, of these, uh, of these dots. That's because I am calculating uh, each dot and its surrounding eight, which I can show by doing this. So I've moved all the calculated dots to be in, uh, in the same center of each cell, but I can start to slide these away. And you can see that this burgundy one here is going towards the center of the burgundy one there, the sign one to the sign one there, this purple one to the purple one there. So if I slide them up to their full extent, everything lines up, that's fine. So remembering this, that, um, that what we've got now is within every cell, we've got the center one and we've got hidden behind everyone is the surrounding eight. That means that if we start to uh, slide these, what we're doing is we're actually revealing the next one across and pushing it into our cell. So again, it makes more sense if I do this, where that's them all kind of offset, but with strange values. But as I kind of push it up, you can see that they all sort of line up with each other magically. So we can get um, dots which can overlap quite a lot. That's pretty cool. Uh, next thing you probably want to do with this is to have uh, random circle sizes, uh, which I do here. I should probably maybe just talk a little bit about what, what this code is doing. So, so you can see here that for every cell, what I'm doing is I'm calculating itself and I'm going uh, you know, the previous column, current column, next column, and then previous row, current row, next row. So that's what these two loops are here. Uh, I'm getting the cell to calculate <clears throat> by calculating my current cell plus whatever the offset is in these two nested loops, um, getting matching UVs for those, and then essentially calculating what I did before. So random offset, radius, smooth, and thing. The last step is how I'm uh, how I'm combining all of those runs together, which I'm using with this, this lerp thing. So what I'm doing is I'm saying uh, the color is equal to uh, the existing color, so in a loop that would just accumulate. Um, and so I'm accumulating from the previous run of the loop plus the new color plus the new circle alpha. So everything gets cleanly composited together. Next step in terms of random scales, random uh, random circle circle sizes, is just uh, was before I was using a fixed radius, which is uh, here. So I'm going between 0.2 and 0.25 to get a slightly soft circle. Uh, and this one, I'm setting a radius driven by a slider and that radius is also being driven by a rand function. So this is a rand function per calculated cell. It makes more sense if I uh, do less, uh, less circles. So again, if I go down to here, set the slider down. So you can see that uh, that's all with a uh, uniform uh, radius. But if I start to introduce this random circle size function and slide them away a bit to where they're meant to go, you can see that again, the circle sizes match up. Let's go to maximum. Uh, larger amount of randomness. So again, you can see that you know, this small purple circle matches up to that small purple circle. This larger uh, burgundy one matches up with that one. So when I slide them all together, they all match up, meaning that when I offset them, it all lines up. That's all cool. Um, but then the next and probably final problem is that uh, there's a lot of white space here. And even if, I, even if I drive up the number of circles, there's still a lot of, a lot of white space. Now, how would you fill it up? Uh, well, the answer is pretty simple. Um, if I were to go back to, down to a small amount and turn this back down again, um, if I were to slide that up, or even just leave it like that, at the moment I'm calculating one circle per cell and I'm secretly calculating all the ones around, but what if I was to calculate multiple circles per cell? That's what this does. So you can see uh, in this one we've got uh, two loops to calculate the other rows. Uh, this one just adds another loop within which is to calculate uh, an extra amount of circles in the inside loop. So if I go to here and let's go back down to a simple one, slide it all down again, whoop, 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 whoop. so down to here. So back where we were, uh, I can start to slide these away to where, the, to, where the, where, to where they're meant to go. But before I do that, I can turn up the number of dots and you can see that I'm actually calculating um, multiple dots per circle, which makes more sense if I turn that down, turn that up, and radius, 
and turn that up a little bit. So now you can see that um, per tile, I'm calculating one dot, two dot, three dots, four dots. So if I push the random stuff all the way and the random radius all the way, and I can sort of fill this up as much as I feel I need to like that. I can drive up the number of tiles to drive the overall scale. Uh, so I've got quite a lot of random dots. So um, you know, the code I think is relatively straightforward to understand. Uh, yeah, I was rather pleased with this. Thanks for um, uh, Dr. Polygon, whatever his name is, real name in real life, for pushing me down this path. I'm pleased with this now.